Hey guys, it's Ryan from Grow, Kill, and Adapt on Refuge Radio. Today I'm going to have Aaron Broman join me from Element Church to discuss, am I qualified? How do we determine when we're qualified to lead kids, leaders, and parents of the next generation? Uh, We're excited to have you with us, so let's get to it. Aaron, thanks so much for joining me today uh, at Grow, Kill, and Adapt. And we're just going to talk a little bit about am I qualified? But before we get into that, I wanted to kind of kind of give us your background, how you ended up in youth ministry, and now you're leading at ESM, which is Element Student Ministry, correct? That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I was a transplant from for job purposes to Altoona, and uh, I've been here a little over three years. And uh, my first experience with youth was actually with you on my birthday. Um, so that was, that was over two and a half years ago. And honestly, I didn't know it was something I was really going to dive into, but I just had a lot of fun whenever we had the yard games and the the video games and, uh, just spent the whole day with youth. It was, it was a new experience. It was eye opening. Um, and it certainly is, is a good reason to talk about this conversation of, am I qualified? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So playing games is easy, but then yeah. there's a whole different side of being qualified, right? Absolutely. So we have a lot of people that come in as leaders and they, they had great experiences when they were younger or in youth group or wherever else they, they feel really good about those memories. Mm-hmm. And then translating that into leadership can look completely different. So one of the questions that I've been kind of dissecting and walking through is what does it look like? What kind of characteristics do we need? need or, or should we be looking at uh, to qualify ourselves as youth leaders? Um, well, honestly, a lot of what I've learned through being involved with with church, doing announcements and running uh, my own youth group with my own leaders, along with helping with refuge is, is very simple. Like uh, Mike always says, love God, love people. I think that's the best place to start. If you can't do those two things, you probably shouldn't be leading. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then on, on top of that, we always have talked about relationships. I, I helped you with the, the Bellwood campus startup uh, while I was doing ESM, and I've continued to do that. Um, if you can't get on their level and just be real, yeah. th- then you're never going to hit a mark of qualification. Yeah. Um, obviously, that comes in a lot of different ways, but it, you know those, those two or three items are, are the pinnacle of Hmm. what it takes to start leading well and developing those qualifications. Yeah, I drive home a lot uh, the authenticity Mm -hmm. of relationship. Uh, I don't have to be the coolest person in the world, but I have to be authentic with who I am Absolutely. for a, a generation to see that, to recognize that I'm real and want to be a part of my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the things that often happens and I've seen happen, and I'm not putting this on anybody else's plate, but I, I but I have seen it happen throughout youth ministry is where we get to the place of the entertainment culture becomes more important. How you, how do you, how can you coordinate fun for me versus diving into the spiritual depth, yeah. but diving into what it looks like to be authentic in relationship and correct and guide and direct and things that, you know, actually challenge a lot more when, when you step in. Cause people say, Oh, you like teenagers. You're good. You're a good leader. Well, what if I don't know, have biblical knowledge or what mm-hmm. if I haven't studied? Um, you know, I had, I, I, when I first came to this area, I went to a conference in Indiana, Pennsylvania, and there was this young guy speaking there. He was probably, you know, 23. I was eight, eight or nine years into ministry already at that point in time. And he said, when I got this job, when I started working with, with youth, I had this problem where I felt like I was at the same level as them. And how was I supposed to grow spiritually and bring depth when everybody was expecting that I was already there? Mm -hmm. And so when I look at those qualifications in those places, a lot of times where I, I struggle or, or I look at people that struggle is recognizing this is a full gamut. This isn't just, Hey, you're good with youth or you're fun or, uh, you are the only person that is in our church under 45. <laughs> you know? yeah. um, it's, it's really the depth of how do I desperately desire these kids to seek after Jesus? And what does it take to bring leaders along that journey with us? Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, that's, that's a huge part of that. Yeah, that that it's it's a complicated balance. Um, being able to to make sure that you are focused enough on your own spiritual walk hmm. that you can 
put that foot forward with them yeah. as needed. They, they need to see the real side. Like it, it's not necessarily Jesus 24 seven. They, they need to know who you are and that is part of your character, but they need to see that authenticity like you were talking mm. about. And, um, you know, I, I came from a, a work environment that was very student oriented. And one of the things that I always said was like, students want discipline, but they're not going to specifically tell you that. <laughs> That's right. true. <laughs> they, they, they want structure. Yeah. And we, we look at that as like a, a form of discipline. Uh, but because they don't tell you that, you have to find ways of, of – bringing that into the relationship, mm -hmm. you know, that that's through authentic authenticity. That's having a listening ear whenever yeah. they have a need. Um, and, and whenever they're having a, a, a bad day, you know, you can tell that you've got to be able to read people. Yeah. Uh, and those are all pieces that come with that qualification of what does a leader look like? Mm. These are all, these all fall under that pyramid of being able to develop, develop yourself, not only spiritually, but then when you're strong enough, you can lead others. So let me ask you this, this is, uh, and I'll answer on the, my side too, but what are some of the tools and things that you've put in practice personally to help you feel more qualified? Um, the biggest thing is, Obviously, I, I need to make sure that I'm talking to God every day. Hmm. That that that's has to be number one. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, head bowed, eyes closed kind of thing. It can be simply, I call it windshield time. Mm -hmm. I spend a lot of my time driving. So, you know, if I have somebody pop into my mind, like that's an immediate response now, not, not originally, but now if I have that person pop into my mind, I use my windshield time and I just start talking to God, like, obviously this person needs something today. Mm -hmm. I don't think that it's just, you know, natural that I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to pray for Ryan today. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe it's a text message. Oh, somebody asked for prayer and I use my windshield time for that. But it, it's, it's putting those pieces into place, you know, looking at a busy schedule that we all get stuck on, yeah. you know, you know, like, it may be awkward, but whenever I was leading uh, a group years ago, I would write the names of my group on my shower wall with like the the Crayola kind of <laughs> water crayons, you yeah, know? Yeah. Because it my was kids just... have ruined my bathroom with those <laughs> yeah, things. <of> course. <laughs> but it's such an easy thing as an adult to say, like, I have this 10 minutes. Like, even if I can just say, God, like, this is my reminder. Here's my names or here's my topics. Mm. Like this, that might be 10 minutes, but it's a 10 minutes that I can start my day on the right foot yeah. with the loving God, loving people. And it just progresses, whether it's with windshield time, whether it's actual quiet time, mm. sitting in an office, um, you know, no distractions, that kind of thing. Yeah. But that's, that's a, that's a huge priority. Yeah. So we had uh, Chris Clemens come on last, last mm -hmm. podcast for Grow, Kill and Adapt. And he talked about the spiritual disciplines. And I think that one of the struggles when you fall into leadership often is that you're doing the disciplines because you want to lead others, not because the disciplines are usually focused on you, you're the intimacy of relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, this last season, what I've walked through, you know, I'm a big book reader. I enjoy diving deep. Um, actually, you gave me a book from Elmer to uh, Towns that was really good about fasting for spiritual breakthrough. Yeah. Um, and I found that to be something that I struggled with and really dug deep on what it meant to be there. Because most of the time, you know, there's a, there's a place where you can run in somewhere in ministry, you're going to run into a place where you feel like I'm doing this because these kids need it. Mm -hmm. And you forget that that st that journey of being a leader requires you to get it. Also, you need it. You need yeah. to be able to be in a deeper relationship with God. And so that was my challenge is uh, I have a few books that I can, um, recommend for you. One of them obviously is the fasting for spiritual breakthrough. There's another book called, um, authentic relationships. I always talk yeah. about it. We did that in our I'm, small group. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually using that right now. Yeah, uh, it's one of my favorite books to do, especially if you're digging deep with your leaders. So I would encourage you to, to get in there and, and push with, with that place. But there's, those are all tools to help you understand kingdom principles. They're not the kingdom itself, but they are, they're tools to help you decipher and understand that. Yeah. I think people get afraid when you start start naming all these different titles of books and they're mm. like, well, well, why aren't you talking about the Bible? Mm. Well, there are so many people out there that have studied and read up on, on so many specific subjects that we really should benefit from, yeah. from those things. And I, I wish I was more of a reader. I have a 
huge library. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that being said, I know where the tools are whenever I need to go mm. to get something. Yeah. And, and those are tools that I use for my own, for, you know, discipling others, but also refilling myself. Mm. Of course, the Bible's part of that. But having people, giants, really, that are in the education world, like Elmer Towns or or um, anybody else, you know, like that that is well-known, big names, like you uh, try to true. That's yeah. Why, that's yeah. What I look at it. Yeah. You, you look at what they're doing yeah. and it's not necessarily replicating, mm. but actually, but adapting what they're saying to what we're doing yeah. on the youth side of things. Yeah, that's good. So let me talk, you know, we just kind of de- deciphered and walked through books a little bit. So what's the difference between the book smart and street smart? And how does that work inside youth ministry mm. uh, while you're trying to dis- determine if you're even qualified? You know, for me, I'll, I'll just kind of share on, on a personal side. I was really good at telling people what to do. <laughs> uh, and it took me a long time time to decide that relationship and biblical principles could come with leading. It it was almost like I had the answers already and I needed you to understand the answers that I determined Mm -hmm. versus walking through relationship with them. So there was a difference. Like I knew how to control the room, but I wasn't as book smart as I needed to be. and so let me uh, like walk me through your process, even with ESM and, and at Bellwood, our campus down there. Like, what does it look like that? Why do we need both sides of that? Um, I think that's probably one of the biggest questions when you talk about qualification. Mm. When you when you had brought me in originally, I'm thinking, like, is this really me? Mm. Like, do is this a title that I can fill shoes for? Yeah. Um, and bringing that, you know, full circle, knowing more of your story that we've, we've talked about that. I have a degree in religion and, you know, I, I can't remember business, business, that's right. Business. <laughs> that's right. Um, business. <laughs> so, so they're both, both pieces definitely, you know, come together. They have that common denominator of leadership and, you know, having an authority, mm. but you know, your story tells a whole lot more than, than what mine does. And I can say, okay, yeah, book smart, I can pinpoint specific things, but sometimes I see you doing that better than I could Hmm. and vice versa. You know, everybody comes from a different background. Your background is so much different than mine, but hearing your story and your growth through it allows me to reach others. So making sure that we're communicating and we we're being transparent and, um, you know, for, for us, that was a discipleship piece. Mm. Uh, you know, as we grew, we were able to to come together on some of those things. And so when we're leading students at, at Bellwood, uh, among other leaders that have completely different stories than both of yeah. us, you know, the, the hurtful things, the, the, the growth tracks, the just anything, we're not the same. Mm. And so th- through leadership and discipleship, we're able to use each other's stories to come full circle to say, Hey, here's, here's a student that needs this. And you know, if I can't do it, I can lead them to you yep. or, or vice versa. Yeah. There's a lot of kids that we did. Uh, hey, I've tried, I got to this mm-hmm. point. This is where I'm at. I think it's time for you to jump in because you're going to bring something different. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and for me, the way that I look at that uh, background is there's a lot of people that end up trying to emulate or, or replicate somebody else's teaching style. I'm not a Micah Marshall. I'll never be Micah Marshall. I, <laughs> that dude speaks. Yeah, he, he, <laughs> speaks he speaks heavy. And, and God has taught me over time how to articulate more of the message that I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. But Micah has a gifting in that. I have a different gifting Mm -hmm. and I have to be okay with that different gifting and be qualified in that gifting to continue to go forward. Um, You know, I I met with somebody recently and they said, you know, you really are, your team is is a group full of experts. And I said, no, we're not. We're a mess. If you look at our office, it's crazy. Like there's dodgeballs everywhere. There's, there's yeah. like, if, if anybody from the business world walk in, they'd be like, these guys are, are nuts. Yeah. Um, but the idea behind it was you have, a, and I say this all the time, stay in your lane. The reason why mm-hmm. I say it and why I sign off is you have a lane that God has directed you towards. Mm-hmm. Follow that purpose. Be qualified inside those places. Become an expert because God continues to work on your heart in those places. And and the qualification isn't a worry then. Right. You know, and for me, that's that's how I ended up sitting here in in a church building, standing up front preaching uh, because God qualified me 
to move forward and recognize I didn't have to be Micah Marshall. I right. didn't have to be great speakers. I didn't have to be the next Francis Chan, whoever else it is. I didn't have to be that person. Mm -hmm. I had to be me because my Absolutely. story was impactful, you know? And so when we, when we dive into uh, the qualification, I think that especially when we have new young leaders coming up, one of the things that helped me, and, and you can talk about this in your journey, is having people that were already qualified or you viewed as qualified tell you that you're ready for that position. Right. Um, I, I had there. There's a lot of youth pastors that come in and out very quickly, and oftentimes they're expected to give great results without a lot of training and, and mentoring. Yeah. And so for me, one of the big things about being qualified is having those that speak truth and life into you to tell you that you are qualified for that position. I don't care if all of your leaders are 65 years old and you are 23. They picked you to lead. So now your job is to, to head that, take that vision forward that God has laid upon the ministry. And it's not your vision. It's God's vision for the ministry that he's, he's given you to carry. Um, so that's, one of the big things for me as you walk forward is, you know, now you're starting to become what we can say, you're going to be tenured in a couple of years in youth <laughs> ministry. If you make it to five years, man, you've done it. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> like, the countdown's on. Yeah. Five years, you've done it. Um, but if, if, but you get to a place of then, okay, who am I qualifying next? Mm -hmm. And that's a big piece of this. Um, but when I talked about the age difference, the, the, the piece of this, what happens when you walk into a place or you see youth leaders that have been doing it longer than you? How do you get past, maybe it's your own fear or insecurity or wh wherever else might be. How do you get past that to be able to, to set the journey forward for the people that now that you, you're, you're supposed to be leading? I think part of it is that you just have to be willing to try something new. Mm. Um, as, a, as a qualification of a leader, you have to be able to, to watch what others are doing. You've got to be able to listen. You have to be heard, but also hear. Mm. And um, we're not all given the same strength. We're not all given the same gifts. Yeah. So when you look at a, at a room of leaders, you have to realize that somebody has a better gift than you do. But it could be something like games. Mm. in a lot of ways considered maybe insignificant. But if that person has the ability to bring a group of people together in fun and relationships and they do that well week in and week out, then, then you delegate. Yeah. Um, if somebody's a speaker, you delegate that, but it's okay to switch those roles occasionally. Mm. So that way there is growth and discipleship amongst your leaders as well. Um, coming from an industry where I was a young leader mm. And most of the, the people that I was leading were two to three times my age. It, it, it is definitely a challenge because you, you look, you get look, I call it age discrimination, right? Like I, I am qualified to do this because somebody has put me in this position already, but there's so much more behind the scenes that people don't always see. Yeah. And it's that seeing and the hearing and, and making sure that you're being heard as well, that how you're leading uh, is affecting all of that. So in that you have to delegate, you mm -hmm. have to find, you know, you, I, you are always a proponent of having titles, you know, yeah. positions and somebody may not do well at one, but succeed in another. You should put them there. Yeah. But you should make, make sure that they're willing to adapt also because somebody might not show up one day yeah. and they've got to be able to know and communicate what that other role is. They may not do it perfectly. They're not a Michael Marshall versus a Ryan Alden, yeah. you know, but, but they can fill shoes as needed because they're well-rounded, they've adapted and they've been intentional about how they've learned to lead. Yeah. So for a big, big part of where I, I look at this is, you know, a lot of times we get into a place and, and especially into the how do I prove to everybody that I'm qualified that you just start doing everything yourself mm -hmm. and you're doing it yourself because you don't want to inconvenience your leaders. You're doing it yep. yourself because you're scared of uh, losing leaders. You're scared of uh, people thinking that you're not doing anything. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, the other absolutely. piece. Uh, and, and you get exhausted doing that though. Like you, you burn yeah. out as a leader whenever you choose that route. Yeah. So where I sat and, you know, I've walked through the journey of, 
finding ways to empower leaders and saying this is your role and then other times knowing that their season is coming to an end and then getting really scared about losing them and then just being like well i'll make it as easy as possible for you not to be, for you to show up mm -hmm. I'll, if you can't make it this week oh it's okay oh, and what i've learned over time is you know there there are times and seasons where it, it's people have to step down and it is okay right. but i also another place of that is re what's really big here is working on qualifying those people that are going to step in succession mm -hmm. planning but also making sure that you're not just saying i'm going to hold everything dear i got to hold this ship together by myself yeah. no maybe you're in the way man like get out of the way for a second let somebody else come in here and fix it it's amazing what happens when you do that yeah um i i'm thankful that like with with element student ministries i haven't lost leaders hmm. i've actually gained some which nice. is really cool um but they're they're different there's a different balance and so how do how do i make sure that the students recognize this person as a leader and and focus on like on what that person's gift is and so it, it brings them it brings them into that fold of, of we're all in this together we're a family we, we're gonna you know we move yeah. forward together um and one of the things that i've really enjoyed is like i i don't think that i'm the best speaker in the world i enjoy speaking and mm -hmm. i enjoy the, the studying and the process of that i'm also not the best at games but there's times where it's it's a whole lot of fun to just kind of be that center of attention mm -hmm. organizing something like that and making a big deal about something that you know, is it may not be that <laughs> how exciting. How many marshmallows can you put on yeah, a toothpick? Yeah. <laughs> and and, and create creating the stir, creating the yeah. creating the 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 uh, entertainment value there. But um, one of my favorite things that we've done with ESM is we come up with like a topic hmm. and we try to use it for a season. And we as we lay out what we would like each meeting to look like, I try to think about which leader can represent that topic the best. And then we take turns speaking. Like there, there is not, it's not all about me speaking every other week. Mm. It's a, it's about this rotational pool. And, and then you use that as a leader, as a form of discipleship, you be available, yeah. you point out, you know, scripture, you point out references to, to help with that balance. And if the, the person doing the entertainment is speaking that weekend, well, guess what? They're, they're not doing the entertainment. So you get to rotate yeah, and you get to, to find, even though it's not your forte, you get to find a new balance because yeah. you're adapting. That's good. Yeah. I actually, um, you know, I'd love to continue to unfold this. I think there's a lot of biblical principles, you know, we're talking about structural elements of side things, but they're like looking at acts for me. Um, again, my life scripture verse being like a big focus of how, how is the church we're supposed to be? And most of the guys that Jesus picked were not qualified. Yeah. Right. In fact, I don't think there was any of them that walked in that were like, Oh, this is it. This is what we needed to be. And, and God spoke life into them, walked mm -hmm. them forward and then said, no, this is, this is your new path. Yeah, And so uh, I, I'm excited about having you here, Aaron. Thanks yeah. for speaking on this. Absolutely. Before we go, we do something uh -oh. every every time. Uh, it's We do a little segment called Youth Builder, okay? It's okay. a U T H Builder, okay? okay? Boom, right on the bottom. That's where it's going to show up. Okay. When we look at the video. <laughs> uh, talks about things we've seen that people have created in youth ministry that we think are super cool. So DIY projects, uh, things that we know that can really enhance the games, the entertainment, but also like things that are, are, are helpful to us. So think of a, a toy game thing that has been helpful that you've seen another youth pastor build. And I will tell you some of the stuff that I've built has already been shared. Chow cheated. He used my first, my, my, my first but uh any other ones that you know of that you would be like wow that's super cool oh i feel like i'd be stealing from you like go ahead I man i don't care i'm not the one that speaks <clears throat> that <laughs> i mean you you've created or found you know i some crazy games um and so trying to emulate that has has been a big challenge of of mine because it's not it's not my forte but if i if i understand what's happening you know that it's something that i would like to bring more to the table hmm. um part of that is just making sure that i dedicate enough time yeah. to, to the planning you know, I'll, I'll tell i'll tell the one that i, I remember okay. you and i standing out back 
two poles in the ground, <laughs> cups on the end with a frisbee, and it's literally like like intense hockey. You and I are just sweating I, out. I back. don't it's think like, I've sweat that much in an like, outdoor game. Like, I called it frickle, but other people call it other things. It's really simple. We'll put up a little link so you guys can yeah. check it out. Uh, but uh, that's probably one of my favorites because it's so intense yeah. and you really don't have to move very much, but you go crazy. Yeah. So. It's, I mean, it's, it's high. It was a high intensity yeah. game. I don't, yeah, but but that's the stuff that makes it fun. It, it's it's what brings people together. Yeah, and, and I, if I remember, we had practically a, a, a cheering squad on both sides yeah. that day. It was, yeah. it was ridiculous, yeah. but it was fun. And and that what that's what makes you me different. But also it, it brings a, a whole group together. And yeah. and just to encourage that atmosphere in that setting is is really what makes youth ministry youth ministry. Yeah. Well, thanks again for coming today, Aaron. Uh, thank you all for listening today. Thanks for checking in to Grow, Kill, and Adapt. Remember to stay in your lane and that we love you. We want to say a very special thank you to our sponsors. Thank you to Park Home for the great furniture and setup that we have in here. Impact Productions for giving us this space because we wouldn't be able to do this without them. And Tailored Designs for, for all the design uh, studio stuff that we need here. Thank you for all your help and your support.